Hi friend. Today we will be learning law of demand. See, this is the same table that we understood in the previous lectures. So, what do we call this table? We call this table as a demand schedule. And when we plot it on a graph, we call it as a demand curve. See, law of demand. What law of demand says that? I give you a very weird example of samosa. I don't know many how many of you like it, but I do not like samosa. But still, I give you an example. Suppose, if you have a piece. 20 in your pocket and your samosa cost you rupees 5 per piece you are able to buy only 4 samosas 4 units of it right so the purchasing power of your is 20 rupees the price of the product is rupees 5 and what you can buy out of it is your 4 units of that particular product let's say the price increased to rupees 10 per piece now what will this price affect to your quantity what you demanded if you have this your income if your income is this you have firstly the price of commodity was this so you could be able to buy only four uh, four units now the quantity uh, price is increased to rupees 10 your income is still the same and so you will be able to buy only two units of that product right so this is how the law of demand works as the price of the product increases the quantity demanded decreases with the rise price with the rise in the price the quantity demanded falls with the fall in the price the quantity demanded of that particular product rises so this is your law of demand other things being constant law of demand states that it states that with the rise in the price of the product rise in the price of a commodity the quantity demanded of a commodity will fall or vice versa what is your vice versa vice versa means if the price falls the quantity demanded rises so this is your law of demand so this is your table right let's plot this table on the graph how we will plot this table i told you many times please label your diagrams and i will repeatedly be telling you about this please label your diagrams so quantity here let's take on a scale of 5 10 15 20 25 30 uh, price also let's take it on the scale of 5 At price uh, 10, the quantity demanded was, at price 10, the quantity demanded is 30.
At price 15, the quantity demanded is 25. At price 20, the quantity demanded is 18. Somewhere here. At price 25, the quantity demanded is, sorry, this is 10. The quantity demanded is 10. So, let's make your demand curve then. We have, we've got these points. Let's make the demand curve. So this is your demand curve D and D. The demand curve we have made, this is your law of demand. With the rise in the price, the quantity demanded falls or vice versa. See, any law in the economics work on certain assumptions. Without assumption, there is no law that exists. So, to the law of demand also, there are certain assumptions to it. Number one, the law of demand holds for normal goods. See, there are three types of goods. Normal goods, inferior goods and different goods. We will be learning about these goods in the coming video. So, law of demand holds only for the normal goods. Law of demand works for price factor only. With it, the determinants that affect the demand means the factors that affect the demand. So, there were five factors in the individual demand that was price of the commodity, price of related good, income of the consumer, taste and preferences, and expectations. So, the law of demand works for only for the price factor. Consumer is rational. Income is constant. The income of the consumer does not change. The price of the related goods, taste and preferences, and expectations are constant. So with this, we complete your law of demand. With the assumptions, there are certain exceptions also to the law that holds in the economics. So this we have started the assumptions. Next, we will be studying your exceptions. There are certain exceptions to the law of demand. See, the first exception to the law of demand is article of distinction. See, if we are from a very rich family or we have a very, a very good background with a income, uh, heavy income with us, we are rich people. So what do we do is we buy gold. Or if we are more richer than now, we buy platinum. Right. We do not buy silver because we don't want because we have enough money, enough uh, you know purchasing power that we can buy either gold or platinum. See, if we are more rich, we will go to Tanish to buy, or we will go to you know PC jewelers because they're uh, making you know cost is very high for gold or platinum. They have more designs. So being rich, we will definitely shift to the luxurious goods we will buy bmw or audi or porsche right we will not buy your brisa Ritz, or amaze right so very rich people opt for these luxurious products Normal, I mean, like not normal, more than uh, middle age, uh, middle group people go for these, right? So, poor people, does he can afford these or these gold and platinum? Do not know. So, the article of distinction, which are your luxurious goods, which show your status, your standard. So, higher the price, higher will be the quantity demanded. Because more will be, will be the price, more it will be of good quality, it will be uh, more good in its status, it will resemble more of your status. So you will buy the higher price things, you will prefer buying higher price things. So these are your luxurious goods. The second one which comes is ignorance. 
what you do sometimes is you if you have different choices you compare the cost you compare the prices of the product if the product one product is costing you rupees 300 the similar product of some other brand is costing you 280 then the same product let's take the example of green tea right so one uh, you know company's green tea cost you rupees 300 the next cost you 280 the next cost you 360 for say 500 grams of packing and there is a fourth company whose 500 grams of green tea is costing just 160 rupees so as a you know rational human being as a rational customer what will you think that this is a premium quality this might also be a premium quality but there would have been some uh, difference in the cost of production there might be some reasons just because 20 rupees gap is there there also is 20 rupees gap so you will be okay like okay this is not that this, these brands are not sacrificing quality much for green tea if there is xyz brand whose 50 grams of green tea is at just rupees 160 what will you uh, assume in your mind being your customer you will definitely assume that this company is definitely sacrificing some of the quality right they might not be giving a uh, very good quality to you so you will be sacrificing this you will be ignoring this and you will buy this either of these so you will be ignoring this so this is the ignorance where the law of demand does not hold the third is your different goods see your different goods are the goods whose income effective is negative and price effective is positive we will be understanding the difference between the normal goods, in, inferior goods and different goods clearly in the video, next video. See, let's understand what are the different goods and how does these are the exceptions to the law of demand. Different goods are the goods that are low quality goods. These are the low, low quality goods. If you see the price of best there's a all of you must have listened the brand name best right they give you rice pulses etc right the price of the best brand rice and pulses is more than what you get at the normal you know journal stores right so the what you get from the journal stores, I won't say the low low quality, but definitely a quality lower than the what best offers. So if you say a poor uh, BPL person, a below poverty line person, if he has to purchase rice, he will purchase rice of rupees twenty per kg. If there is a middle, you know, income group person. He will buy a rice of 40 per kg or that is 50 per kg. If a person is of highly, you know, a high income group, uh, you can say a very rich people, extremely rich people, they might eat brown rice or they might, you know, take 150 rupees kg rice, 100 rupees kg rice because they can afford. So this is your different good. This one, your 20 rupees kg is your different good. So at this point of time, if the price of good increases from 20 to 50 rupees, right? So this will come into the category of this, so it will become your normal good. So with the rise in the price, the quantity demanded of this good will increase. This is how the, uh, this is the exception to your law of demand.